Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture on nuclear models. There exists no fundamental theory that can explain all the nuclei properties. Different models have been developed that can explain some, but not all, the properties of nuclei. For this lecture on nuclear models, I'll discuss the liquid drop model and the shell model. Let's start with the liquid drop model. Weizsäcker in 1935 stated that the nuclear properties is related with its size, mass, and binding energy. The nuclear properties can be modeled as a drop of liquid. Refinements have been made uh, to the coefficients of this model over the years, but the formula structure is still the same. I'll discuss how can we describe the binding energy of a nucleus using the liquid drop model that we will present here. We will have the following assumption. So first, the density is constant. Second, the size is proportional to the number of particles. Last, the heat of vaporization, or for our case, for the nuclear model, the binding energy is directly proportional to the mass or number of particles. Okay, so here uh, we have the illustration of the terms of the semi-empirical mass formula in the liquid drop model of the atomic nucleus. The liquid drop model accounts for the spherical shape of most nuclei and predicts the binding energy. This mass formula is defined based on the atomic number Z and the atomic mass number A. The formula can be described using five terms as shown here. The first term is the volume energy term, second is the surface energy term, third a coulomb energy term, fourth is the asymmetry energy term, last is the pairing energy term. Let's start with the first term, which is the volume energy term. If you add the nucleons to a nucleus, the binding energy tends to increase. Therefore, we can have this first term, which refers to the volume energy. Wherein A, V here is a constant or a coefficient, and A is the atomic mass number. As the volume of the liquid drop increases, the total binding energies tend to increase as well. This is proportional to A, uh, which is the number of nucleons present in the liquid drop. The volume term shows that if the nucleus is big, then the more protons and neutrons can hold each other through the nuclear force. The volume is proportional to the mass number A, and this is proportional to the radius R cubed. Now let us consider the protons and neutrons at the surface of the nucleus, which have less interactions than those inside the radius of the liquid drop. This means that they are not tightly bound compared to the particles inside this volume. This is similar to the cohesive forces on molecules of a liquid shown in the diagram at the right. Therefore, it is roughly equivalent to the liquid surface tension. Thus, uh, we should uh, subtract this surface energy given that they are not equally bound than to what we assumed previously. We have this uh, equation now. This is our volume energy term and this is our surface energy term. Note that the surface is proportional to r squared and this is proportional to the A raised to two-thirds given that your A, the atomic mass number, is proportional to r cubed. Next, we take into account the potential energy from each uh, protons. As this is a repulsive force, the binding energy is reduced, thus this term is negative. The potential energy of a nucleus can be considered as a sphere of uniform charge uh, density shown in this equation. So this is our uh, potential energy equation, wherein the Q here is the total uh, charge and R is the sphere's radius. We let Q be equal to Z E shown here, wherein Z is the atomic number, E is just the constant of the charge of the electron, and given that the radius is proportional to A uh, raised to one third, as we have shown previously and through this empirical nuclear uh, radius shown in this uh, approximation. The z squared is approximated 
as Z times the quantity Z minus 1 because Coulombic repulsion exists for more than one proton only. And therefore, uh, with those things, we can write our Coulomb energy term shown above with this constant AC. The next term is the asymmetry energy. The asymmetry energy takes into account the Pauli exclusion principle. The unequal numbers of neutrons and protons means leaving one type of particle vacant for the lower energy levels compared to the other type with filled higher energy levels. Experimentally, the number of protons uh, being not equal to the number of neutrons means that the binding energy is small. So therefore, uh, we can have a higher binding energy if your protons and neutrons are equal. And with that, we can write uh, the following. So we already have our volume energy term, the surface energy term, the column energy term, and this one, the asymmetry energy term. Wherein it's just the difference of your Z with your N uh, squared to make sure that the difference is positive over A, the atomic mass number with this coefficient. Now we consider the tendency of proton pairs and neutron pairs to occur. An even number of particles is more stable than an odd number due to spin coupling. This is observed experimentally that we need to incorporate to our liquid drop model. This term is known as the pairing term. It depends on the value of the proton uh, number Z, shown here, and the neutron number N. So we have this delta here. Delta, uh, that delta term uh, is positive delta naught if your Z is even and the number of neutrons N is even. If, if we have even odd or odd even numbers of protons or neutrons, uh, the value of your delta is zero. And if your Z is odd and your N is odd, we have this negative delta naught, wherein delta naught is equal to a constant AP or to this coefficient times A raised to negative one half. Now we have this B2 by Zacker mass formula, or it's just the semi-empirical mass formula that we have derived using the liquid drop model. Uh, with this, five terms, the volume, the surface, the column, the asymmetry, and pairing. We also have the following uh, coefficients uh, based on the fitting to experimental data. We have the value of AV here for the volume energy equal to 15.75 MeV, AS equal to 17.8 MeV, AC equal to 0.711 MeV, a sub A for the asymmetry equal to 23.7 MeV. Last for the delta, the pairing term, we have this coefficient AP is equal to 11.18. The same empirical mass formula therefore provides a good fit to heavier nuclei and a poor fit to very light nuclei, especially for helium-4. For, uh, for light nuclei, it is usually better to use a model that takes this shell structure into account. The figure on the left shows the graph of the b 2 y Zacker semi-empirical mass formula. It shows the same trend of stable nuclei as shown in the table of nucleides, wherein uh, we have those stable nucleides somewhere at the region of higher neutrons compared to protons. Note that the red color here refers to those nuclei with large binding energy. The liquid drop model was also able to describe how the nucleus can deform and undergo fission. The nucleus is most stable when it is spherical. If a thermal neutron hits a nucleus, let's say for this case uranium-235, a compound uh, excited nucleus is formed with extra energy. This energy sets the compound dumbbell-shaped nucleus into oscillation. Due to the positive charge repulsion on the two ends, it will split into fragments. The liquid drop model assumes that a nucleon interacts only with its nearest neighbors, similar to the molecules of a liquid. On the other hand, the nuclear shell model assumes that each nucleon interacts due to a general force field produced by all the other nucleons. The nuclear shell model uses the Pauli exclusion principle 
to explain the nucleus structure in terms of energy levels. The shell model is somehow analogous to, a, to the atomic shell uh, model in which a field shell results in greater stability. This model started from the average potential uh, with a shape of similar between the square well and the harmonic oscillator. A spin orbit uh, term is also added. Nuclei with even number of protons and neutrons are more stable. Experimentally, this can be explained due to that any particular state is filled when it contains two protons or two neutrons. An extra proton or neutron can be added at the expense of increasing the nucleus energy that leads to a greater instability. Now, in the nuclear shell model, there are certain magic numbers of nucleons that includes 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126, which are more tightly bound than the next higher number. Meaning, the atomic nuclei with the magic number of protons or neutrons are more stable than other nuclei. The figure on the right shows the low-lying uh, energy levels in a single particle shell model with an oscillator potential with and this is the uh, uh, with spin and this is for the without spin orbit interaction the leftmost part shows the quantum energy states of potential well uh, including the angular momentum effects then the next column shows further uh, splitting from spin orbit effect then we have the multiplicity uh, of states shown in these numbers the box numbers at the rightmost uh, indicate closed shells which are the magic numbers of nucleons. Examples are helium-4, uh, oxygen-16, and calcium-40. Helium-4 and oxygen-16 uh, here are examples for the closed nuclear shell. Nuclei uh, which have both neutrons and protons equal to one of the magic numbers can be called doubly magic and are discovered to be particularly stable. In summary, the liquid drop model assumes that a nucleus is a collection of particles and it gives a semi-empirical formula for experimental binding energy. It is successful in describing the nuclear fission as well. The shell model describes the structure of the nucleus with individual nucleons with energy levels. That's it! Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, Please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JP Academy. See you in the next video.